Take us through the latest on your spec plans. I mean, why the delay? Will it be completed this quarter? Now, good morning, and thank you for having us, uh, Slinda. Now, I, I think you know things continue to progress well. You know, we're very pleased with the process of taking this business. We've been in operations now for 15 years, and you know, we've been very deliberate in how we've built out this business over that period. Uh, as you know, in a, in a previous conversation I shared, you know, we decided to partner with Bridgetown largely because of uh, the strengths of Thiel Capital and Pacific Century Group and, you know, how well they were able to help us share our story with investors in Asia, but also in North America. We said we would probably uh, list the business towards the tail end of Q1 of this year, and we remain on schedule. We uh, released our F4 filing in December and an amended F4 actually last month in January. And, you know, things continue on schedule as far as we're concerned. Well, where specs are concerned, it seems to have passed its peak popularity. Is that a concern for you? So I guess, you know, the structure itself, even in the first instance, was uh, less relevant to us. It was more about the partners making sure that we had the right uh, backers to be able to share our story. I think the fact, you know, when we put out our F4, we shared our H121 results, and we delivered 17.9% revenue growth year on year for the first half 21 versus the first half 20 uh, you know, we uh, also uh, reflected the fact that we have continued to grow our market share, our engagement market share from consumers. Um, and, you know, that is, you know, north of 80% now. We're serving 52 million people every month. So I think the fundamentals of the business um, and the partner you work with is perhaps far more significant than the structure. We also announced when we did the pipe investment, we got very sophisticated investors like Bailey Gifford and Naya, et cetera. Uh, who have backed us. So, And we've got investors actually from all continents, from Asia, from North America, and Europe, who are backing us through the pipe investment. So um, I think we remain confident in, in the, uh, you know, the readiness of this business to go public, as well as the, the partners who are helping us get there. Harry, give us a sense of, uh, you know, what sort of valuation you'd be seeking. You probably won't tell us that, but please have a stab at it. Uh, and also just tell us, you know, are you profitable? So uh, we actually did, did, did disclose, you know, the pipe investment, et cetera. We, we're raising it at uh, an enterprise value of about 1.35 billion US, uh, including the, the cash, uh, which we will uh, take to the balance sheet. We're targeting having a, uh, an equity value of 1.78 billion US dollars uh, upon the completion of this transaction. So I'm glad <laughs> for once as we go public, I can talk a little bit more openly about our valuation and what you know investors like Naya, Bailey Gifford, uh, Akaris in the US, et cetera, very sophisticated investors have valued us at, uh, and of course, uh, PCG and Thiel Capital. Uh, you know, we have uh, turned operationally profitable. We were adjusted EBITDA positive back in 2018, stayed adjusted EBITDA positive all the way through 2020. Um, and we're pro projecting being adjusted EBITDA positive in FY22 as well. So I think being operationally profitable is something we've done for many years. Our profitability continues to increase. Um, and obviously for us, adjusted EBITDA is the best indication of cash flows and our ability to actually build good unit economics. You know, we have very strong uh, unit economics overall. And I think one of the best things is, you know, a large uh, percentage of the traffic that comes to our platform is organic. And we saw that only increase during COVID. You know, 65% of the traffic coming to our marketplaces on Property Guru is organic, which means it's not through paid marketing. And that sort of underpins this very profitable business model that's been around for over 25 years. Yeah, th this is it, isn't it? EBITDA profitability is one thing, net is another. But I want to get to what you would do with the money from a, a capital raising or whatever form uh, there as well. And, you know, where do you see perhaps holes in your business which need actually to be perhaps uh, accentuated, if you will? Where do you need to grow? Yeah, I think we are very excited about the prospects for the region. We launched uh, a new business, Property Group Finance, in the middle of COVID in 2020. We've already brokered over a billion Singapore dollars worth of home loans. We launched a very innovative product called Smart Refi last year, which helped people manage their finances and understand when is the right time for them to refinance their home. We've also built enterprise products for developers, things like Fastkey and Fastkey Storyteller, which allow real estate developers with sales process automation. In these areas, as well as in the space of real estate data, we see a great opportunity. So data and software solutions for enterprise players in the real estate sector, financial services or fintech products for the real estate sector, we see a huge opportunity an opportunity both to build, but also very much to buy. Uh, and so m &A is very much on the agenda. As you might know, uh, in 2021, we 
uh, acquired REA's assets in Malaysia and Thailand, including iProperty Malaysia. Um, and we have been successful in integrating those businesses. We've started realizing some of the synergies as a result of those integrations. So our track record of inorganic growth to complement a strong organic growth engine uh, has underpinned our growth over the last 15 years. But I think post listing as well, we are very clear that that roughly $400 million that we'll take to the balance sheet will largely be in service of our inorganic growth uh, with our core business being uh, cash generative already. Hurry there are naysayers. They say that post spec property guru is a sell because uh, the business in Singapore is not sustainable and that your fintech and data services uh, are not well executed. What do you say to that? So clearly we disagree. I, I would say that, you know, over the last several years, we've been able to actually show uh, that, you know, not only are we able to grow our revenue, but also grow our customer engagement, our customer loyalty, uh, agent renewal rates are at all time highs. Uh, consumer engagement, roughly 84% of consumers in Singapore search for a property on Property Guru. Uh, this is similar. We have north of 90% market share in Malaysia, uh, north of 70% market share in, uh, in Vietnam. So we're very high market share in a number of markets. It's not just about Singapore, first and foremost. Uh, but I think also secondarily, we have seen that during COVID, a flight to quality, more agents, more consumers dealing with our platforms than any other platform uh, in our space. In addition to this, we've obviously been able to continue to grow that revenue. We've already uh, filed our first half numbers, as I mentioned. In the midst of COVID, we've been able to grow our revenue 79.9% year on year, grow our leadership, acquire uh, interesting businesses right. and markets in Malaysia and Thailand. So I'm pretty op optimistic about our future. Uh, Hari, before we let you go, we're looking at a higher rate environment. How might that impact demand for property in Southeast Asia? So clearly interest rates are, are going to play a determinant. But I, I, what I'd say is the counter, uh, uh, counterfactual on that one is the, that you have three strong macro tailwinds. You have urbanization, increasing digitalization, and an emerging middle class. And I think the fact is these increasingly affluent people moving to cities and towns in our countries are going to need homes and they're going to look for digital solutions. Interest rates are going to prove a little bit of a headwind, but the reality is outside Singapore in particular, the real estate sector has really been in lockdown. The lockdowns enforced by COVID uh, over the last two years, and there's tremendous demand waiting on the sidelines. We remain very optimistic about FY22 and uh, you know what's going to happen. Just as one data point, as Vietnam opened up right at the end of 2021, we saw a 4.5x of uh, listing volume versus August of 2021. So as the markets open, you're seeing demand and supply come online in big in droves. Uh, I'm right. optimistic about the real estate sector.